going? It's Charles Botenston from BPI. Today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite subject, which is discount brokers, flat fee brokers, brokers commission in general, and anything that has to deal with the compensation a broker gets. Okay, This is on everyone's top of mind that is looking to sell their apartment. What do I pay the broker? What about 6%, 5%? This person's at a flat rate. This person kicks back money back to the buyer. This person's at 4,000 and they'll do it. Everything, exactly what our normal broker would do. So outside of the New York City area, I cannot talk about because to be honest, it might be a little bit easier. There's a lot of disclosures. There's a lot of forms that need to get filled out. So I can't talk about the ease of use or getting the highest price or things like that. Because if you put a home on the market, say where my mom lives in, on Long Island in Nassau County is it's pretty desired area where she lives. So as long as it's at the right price, I don't see how the home will not get the amount of buyers as long as she compensates the buyer's agents. So that would be someone that puts it up and uses probably the best broker that you can, but the best broker is going to be at 6%. And the reason I say that is there is a difference between a good and a bad broker. There's a monumental difference between a good negotiator, excuse me, and a bad negotiator. Monumental. In other words, there's a lot of buyer's agents and there's a lot of listing agents that just want to get the deal done. And the problem with that is that when you just want to get the deal done, you don't look for the highest price. You just want to get the deal done. So you're doing a disservice with the owner in which you represent. In other words, there's a fiduciary responsibility by the listing agent to get the highest price. And the reason I brought up before, which is, listen, if it's in a desired building, if it's a desired area, if it's one of a kind, which everyone says it's one of a kind, it's not really one of a kind, it's one of probably about 10 that the buyer is looking at, the listing agent, a lot of times an owner says they just put it up and it sells. In an incredibly good market that we've been going through in the suburbs, yes, that's 100% true. You'll get 30 offers, 40 offers, 50, 100 offers. You know, you've been seeing these crazy open houses throughout the United States where it literally looks like it's a theme park or you're going to Disneyland and you look around, you're like, this is just for one home. This open house is just for one home. But this is the difference is that if you're selling outside of one of those markets, there's there, we'll, we'll talk about two different areas, all right? Which is, we'll talk about the scenarios and then we'll talk about the brokers. So the scenarios are, it's a very good market and you have to choose the best offer, okay? There's a lot to go through. There's a lot to an offer. It could be cash, not cash, contingent on this, contingent on that. Obviously pricing, when is it closing? In New York City, it's what are the financials? What are they offering? And then closing date, do they have to sell something else? Are they not? Are, is it contingent on financing? Is it contingent on the appraisal? Um, are they going to get through the board? Does the board like the actual number that the contract price is? So there's a lot of different scenarios. But what we're going to focus on are the actual brokers. And the reason is because when you walk into a restaurant where steaks are $50 or $60, it's a little bit different than if you walk into, say, the Olive Garden. The Olive Garden, you don't expect much as, a, as opposed to, say, a five-star Michelin restaurant, restaurant. And the reason being is cost, okay? When you pay more, you get more. When you don't pay as much, you don't get. This is historical. The thing is, a lot of owners conflate every broker is the same. Yes, if they put it up, most likely the photos are the same, and most likely the description is roughly the same, and most likely the process to the actual listing is roughly the same. Yes, some brokers will send out mailings and newsletters and inform the building and text and call other, say, properties that they sold and said this is coming available. That's rough. In other words, pre-listing is not going to be too over the top different. Yes, some agents do. They spend hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars. We spend hundreds of dollars. But to be honest, it's not going to be crazy difference. The real difference is when it's listed. That's when the difference happens. Is the broker available? Is the broker good at showings? There is a like a like that's how incomplete 
a bad broker is at showing a property as opposed to a good broker. When I show a property or when good brokers show a property, they get into it. They ask the questions, they, they find out the needs, the wants, what have you seen, what have you liked, have you placed any offers, how long you've been looking, what's important, do you have a big table, do you have a queen size bed? You start working with the buyer during the showing to have them visualize living there. And I know it sounds just basic, but trust me, when you walk in representing a buyer and you see these listing agents that are not that good, it's embarrassing, to be honest. You leave and the buyer doesn't even want to work with the listing agent. So not only are they bad, they're not even, they don't even want to work with that buyer's agent because of how they conducted the showing. So that's just the showing, okay? An offer. How does the person negotiate? Most brokers, 95% of brokers, are terrible at negotiating. Terrible. They have no idea what to do. They're just throwing out numbers. There's no strategy. There's no psychology behind it. There's no emotion behind it. It's just like, what about this? Okay, what about that? What about... Th and they just go into it and they just tell the owner, hey, listen, this is what we should accept. Why am I saying this? The reason being is that if an agent feels that they are not worth 6%. And obviously the price range differs, okay? So if the price range is 5 million or 10 million or 20 million, it's a little bit different than if it's 750,000, okay? I'm, I'm saying regardless of the price point, you get what you pay for. And this is the best way to say it, is that do you wanna go through three months or three and a half months or four months or five months or whatever long the process is with a listing agent that isn't going to give you updates. They're not going to tell you what the feedback is. They're not going to adjust their showings to the feedback. And to be honest, during the whole process, you don't know what's going on. You, you, you just see that your property is listed, but you're getting no feedback. You just, what about offers? What about uh, what's going, what are the buyers saying? How often are you showing it? In other words, those are basics. But once the offer comes in and you think, you know what, I can get a higher price. I don't know what's going on in the negotiations. This is the best way to find out. A million dollars. An agent says, I'm worth 6%. Another agent says, I'm worth 4%. If you list it at a million dollars, $20,000 when an offer comes in, to be honest, goes like that. If someone lists their property at a million dollars and an offer comes in at 940, 60 K, you gotta close. A lot of owners will just say, what do you think? And the broker, because they just want to get the deal done, will throw out, you know what, let's go down 30K. Let's go down 25K. And it sounds good. Okay, let's get the deal done. Let's get this offer on the table. And obviously, yes, there's a lot of situations that, you know, was it priced a little too high, things like that. But when you're negotiating the person's commission, the agent's commission up front, that amount that you negotiated, say I was at six and someone was at four, which is 2%, 2% of the purchase price is 20K. The discount, who doesn't know how to negotiate or is a flat rate, 20K goes like that. Meanwhile, I push to make the experience better. Not only that is, and good brokers, not just me, but good brokers who are worth their 6%, will ensure that you easily make that money up. That's the most important thing is the experience, how you felt during it, was it miserable, I hate brokers, this was terrible, or I was really happy with the process, I'm super excited we got the price we did, they knew how to go back and forth with multiple offers to make sure that we had a bidding war or at least they bid against each other. That's a little bit different, that's strategy. That's someone who's, that's an agent who's willing to go into the bold, Ask, ask the buyer, hey, listen, this other buyer is willing to go to 950, 960, 970. Is that something that you'd willing to match, go higher? In other words, when you're, you get what you pay for. And I went a little all over the place on different scenarios, but all of these scenarios will come up. Is it a good buyer's market? Is it a bad buyer's market? Is it a good sales market? Is it a bad sales market? Within each market, there's a strategy that has to go to listing the property and the experience that the buyer makes or, or feels to make a good offer. And if you don't have a good broker, 
which that costs money, you're not going to either get the highest price, it's not going to be the best experience, you may not even sell it, the buyer, or I'm sorry, the broker might even buy the listing and tell you this highfalutin price that they can't even get, and you're just wondering, you told me that I can get a million dollars, meanwhile the offers are coming in at 940, where's the disconnect? Again, you get what you pay for. So I would highly recommend that when you sit down with listing agents, you ask all of them if it's flat rate, if it's discount, if it's 1%, if it's 3%, if it's 6%, whatever the percent is of the commission of your listing price, is that you ask them to, to defend their commission. You ask them to defend the price in which they give. So if they're all over the place on pricing and you have to have bells ringing in your head that says the good broker or the 6% broker told me this price, the 1% broker told me this price, why is there such a disconnect? You, you have to figure that out. And it sounds good to say, I can easily get you over what you want. I can easily close this within 30 days or 60 days or 90 days, whatever it is. But the problem is, is that there's, it's, that's an emotional decision that says, listen, it feels good to get a price that's higher than what I want or pay less in commission. But on the back end, in other words, once it's listed, what's going on? What's the feedback? Why are there no offers? Why are the offers so low? Why can't we get a bidding war? Why are we not negotiating enough? These are questions you're now in a contract with a listing agent that you may not like. And unfortunately, you have to go with it. This is the biggest sale of an apartment. And it's always one of those areas, I'm not saying good or bad, and I'm not saying all folks who are at 1% or 3% or flat rate or things like that aren't good. They're actually really good. I have a friend who has a company. He's a very good agent. He's an amazing agent, to be honest. And he, I think he charges 1%. That's a very good agent. He's a very good agent. His, his friend, who I'm also mutually friends with, they started the company, 1%, and they're very good. And to be honest, I think they're worth more. However, there's a lot of agents that I hear and I see the price that it went for or what they tell the owner and I say, you can't get that. You know, the maintenance to, is too high. People are gonna say, this maintenance compared to other apartments, I'm just gonna buy other apartments. So hopefully this helps to just question the agents and not go with what feels good, what sounds good, people who are trying to please you with the price or the commission. And this is the last thing I'll say is that if an agent is willing to reduce their commission like this, in other words, will you do 4%? Yes. How quick are they gonna be able to defend your price? If they can't even defend their own commission, if they're not even able to defend the money they're gonna get, how are, how are you have any faith that they're gonna be able to defend the money you get? In other words, the offer you get. They're just gonna to wanna to get the deal done. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We're gonna go over more fun and controversial topics in the future. Hopefully this helps because I know there's a lot of uh, owners out there that are unsure of which route to go. It's about defending Ask them to defend their commission, defend their price. What are they going to do different? And to be honest, personality matters. It really does. A buyer sometimes does not make offers because of how bad the showing went or they can't see themselves in the home. Hopefully this helps. Again, my name is Charles Botenston from BPI. Catch you next week.